Hi guys, welcome to the very first Happy Berry podcast with me, Laura Eccleston at Happy Berry Crochet, and of course the lovely new addition to the Happy Berry team, who's very shy, <laughs> is, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Mia Deruka. And we are now a team at Happy Berry, so... Um, yeah, so I have, the reason I wanted to start a podcast uh, is mainly because Happy Berry has been running now for must be about 12 years now since I've been doing Happy Berry. And in that time, a lot has changed, not just in the crochet community, as people call it, but also just in what I've been doing myself. I've done so many different things and so many dramas have happened and stuff you never hear about or get shown. And I just thought, why not put a podcast together without mentioning any names, of course, <laughs> and talk about some of the dramas that have happened to me over the last decade and more. But today I thought we would kick off with something quite simple and uh, and that is just how Happy Berry started in the first place and what life was like back then and uh, and how different the crochet community in the UK specific, specifically um, back, back then. So, uh, and then hopefully... The lovely Missy here, well, if you have any questions, ask, join in. He's very shy, <laughs> but I'm trying to get him to come on to uh, definitely the podcast, but hopefully the videos in the future. But he thinks his English is terrible. It's not terrible. I'm sure people understand <laughs> he's frowning at me. But uh, I'm just going to put down my knitting that I'm actually, I'm actually knitting today. I'm just going to put my knitting down today. I'm currently working on the Le Marais shawl, which I don't know if you've been following me on Instagram and uh, YouTube. I was uh, kindly gifted, this podcast is not sponsored by the way, but I was gifted um, a knitting kit. And uh, so I'm currently almost about halfway through, I would say, in my knitting project. And I'm looking forward to, to finishing that. So and if you don't know, I do actually teach beginner knitting as well. So if you've always wanted to learn to knit as well as crochet, then do head to my YouTube knitting channel, Happy Berry Knitting. Quick, quick promote there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so how did Happy Berry start? Well, Happy Berry actually started pretty much around the same time my daughter came into the world, and uh, which would be around, oh, was it 2009 when uh, I first started crocheting and I, and I have always worked with yarn since I was a child. Um, my mum's a knitter. Um, unfortunately, she can crochet, but unfortunately she doesn't crochet because she has very bad arthritis in her hands. But I've always had a kind of yarny upbringing, crafty upbringing. I used to make friendship bracelets in school as well. I used to sell them until the headmistress uh, banned them and then basically put me out of business overnight. So that was annoying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I uh, didn't actually get properly into crochet, actual crochet with a hook, um, until, uh, yeah, around 2009. And in the very, very beginning, uh, I actually started a company. It was called, uh, I think I called it Mad Hatter Crochet or something like that. <laughs> Mad Hatter. Because <laughs> I, I just wanted to primarily make and sell crochet hats. So I thought I'd call myself the Mad Hatter. And some play on words from... Uh, Alice in Wonderland, but uh, that's why I still have that email address, Mad Hatter, um, in case you ever wondered, Missy, why? No, probably not. <laughs> He's looking at me as if I'm crazy. But uh, yeah, my, my initial plan years ago was actually uh, just to just to crochet hats and actually sell the final products. And uh, And at the time, I was actually looking at other people's uh, crochet patterns and it was very interesting back then because in the UK hardly anyone crocheted well people were crocheting obviously but they weren't on the internet so um, the internet crochet world internet crochet world back you know in the UK back in 2009 was very very quiet it was like it was all about the knitting in the UK so crochet was very much an American thing and uh, I think the reason I particularly chose crochet over knitting is because I, although I could knit, I always find it really slow and cumbersome. If you drop, 
if you drop a, uh, there's me trying to get people to sign up to my knitting channel. Don't listen to what I say. <laughs> but I always found that if you dropped a, uh, a stitch, because you're always carrying so many stitches on knitting needles. And uh, if you drop a stitch, it, I, I'd always end up just completely undoing the whole thing and just starting again. And uh, being a bit of a perfectionist, I found that quite annoying. So... The great thing about crochet is you're only working with one stitch at a time. So if you drop that stitch, it's pretty easy to pick it back up. So I was uh, really, really got into crochet. Um, but like I said, it wasn't popular in the UK back then. It wasn't, it wasn't so much a thing. It was all about the knitting over here. So I, I actually learned, a lot of people ask me this as well, you know, why do you use US terminology as opposed to UK terminology because uh, there are differences. In my opinion, I think the US terminology makes more sense. You know, you have the slip stitch, the single crochet, the double crochet, the treble crochet, you know, it makes sense. But for some reason in UK terminology, it goes from a slip stitch straight to a double crochet. And I'm like, why, why not have a single? It doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, that's just, I'm sure, there, I'm sure there is a reason, and I'm sure I did a blog post on that at one point as the reason, but I can't remember why now. Um, but I actually learned and used US terminology from the very, very beginning. Uh, a lot of the patterns I was crocheting from were American, so obviously crochet was more popular in America. And that's just how that all started. Um, and the one thing, the, re the main reason I learned is because I, I really wanted to uh, find a sun hat for my daughter because she was born in the summer, she's a summer girl, and it was very, very hot. And um, I was trying to find just a nice, simple cotton hat in the in the local store, just a normal fabric hat. And um, I couldn't find one anywhere, and I just, I just wanted to make her one, so I decided just to make my own uh, hat for my daughter. And actually, a lot of my early patterns were baby orientated that's why I, I don't do much baby stuff anymore because my daughter is uh, very far from being a baby anymore she's a teenager now but um, back then it was all about the hats and the baby booties and stuff like that but I actually found a lot of the patterns I was uh, crocheting were I don't know they, they they weren't very fashionable they weren't very contemporary um, they were very old-fashioned which is nice, it was great for learning some skills, but I was like, no, yeah, I want something contemporary, I want to, I want my daughter to look cool, <laughs> and I want to create some, you know, like nowadays you see all these cool, like, sneakers and trainers, uh, crocheted sneakers and stuff, and uh, they look really cool, so back then they were really hard to sort of find things like that and stuff, and I got very irritated um, <laughs> with the patterns, I found them overly complicated and confusing, and I, I, I actually feel that, now I'm a designer myself, I actually feel that some designers maybe uh, deliberately make them hard as if like it's a, a, a secret world crochet designing that they don't want other people to, to uh, be able to make their things for some reason, I don't know. But I, I found the patterns very overly complicated, unnecessarily complicated. So I, I reached this point where I wanted to just start doing my own thing and trying to simplify crochet simplify crochet simplify patterns and actually make them more contemporary all at the same time and uh, I think that's why that's how I became a crochet designer I just naturally slipped into just being a crochet to actually designing my own things because I I really wanted to make more contemporary things and that were a lot more easy to understand, you know, write them down for other people so they can actually understand it. So that's what I did. I started doing that and um, I started sharing. I, I remember I originally shared in the very, very beginning on Facebook, <laughs> the dreaded Facebook. And uh, I had I had a website pretty early on because my background is obviously as a, and not obviously you guys aren't going to know, but <laughs> as a web designer. I used to be a web designer before... I left the uh, IT world and um, so I had all the skills and contacts to uh, build my own website pretty early on so I was sharing things online and on, on Facebook and um, I, I then was uh, setting up the the brand I was like going to come up with 
because obviously Mad Hatter wasn't wasn't working. You know, I wanted to make more than just hats. I wanted to move on from the baby hats and you know make booties and toys and and all the million other patterns that I've designed over the years. And that was a really good move. I think if you are setting up your own crochet company, I think definitely think about branding early on. But what's quite interesting interesting is the Happy Berry brand has not changed in a decade like the the actual logo or anything like that. it's just not it's, it's definitely stood the test of time you quite like the uh my logo don't you yeah yeah, yeah I like. <laughs> thank you <laughs> there's actually got quite an interesting story the happy berry name because where where did that come from and i actually have to give credit to uh someone else for that because uh I originally came up with the name Nanny Berry. It was going to mean Happy Berry was going to be Nanny Berry. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know why I chose Nanny Berry as in grandmother, Nanny Berry, as if it was a kind of... I mean, Berry came from the fact that my daughter loves raspberries. So her whole life has never changed. She absolutely loves raspberries and fruit. Strawberries and raspberries are her favourite to this day, as you know. <laughs> and... Uh, So berry was definitely going to be a part of it. And I wanted to create this kind of, you know, healthy image and uh, also a family orientated um, business idea. So it's a very family friendly company and it's all healthy with fruit. And so I was like, oh, nanny berry sounds nice. It's like protective. And I remember going, I remember it was GoDaddy. I went on, don't ever use GoDaddy, I probably shouldn't say that, but I went on GoDaddy and I checked the domain name, nannyberry.co.uk and it was available. And I was like, oh, great. I okay, think that's brilliant. And, but I didn't register it then and there. I was, I went away and I thought about it just for 24 hours. And then the next day I went back to register Nanny Berry and uh, it'd gone and it was being um, available for sale. And that really annoyed me. And I, th- there was something in the system, I don't know how, but it was like, because I checked it, I felt like someone, oh, someone wants this, I'm going to buy it quickly and then sell it back to them. And that really annoyed me. So I was like, I'm not buying it off you, I'm just going to change the name <laughs> and... Uh, my ex-husband, actually, at the time, he was the one who actually came up with the idea Happy Berry, which I actually think was a much better idea, to be honest, than, than Nanny Berry. And that's how Happy Berry came came along. So uh, obviously did a search at the time for anything else Happy Berry crochet related. And there's obviously lots of Happy Berry companies out there, mainly to do with fruit. And, um, and there's also, interestingly, I remember there being a... Happy Berry uh, Japanese uh, manga brand in a, a manga comic called Happy Berry. It's like a fashion brand. So sometimes you see that prop up on, on the internet. But there's nothing to do with Happy Berry crochets. So I was like, brilliant, register it immediately and um, got the uh, Happy Berry brand back then. And uh, and that's how it came. It could have been Nanny Berry all this time. But <laughs> thanks to that person who registered that and tried to sell it back to me. Um, it became Happy Berry in the end, so and it's been Happy Berry ever since. Never, ever changed it. Um, and I really like it. I think it's a, a really nice name, and it's, it reminds me of my daughter and her love of fruit. And and I think also the happy the happy name, it's... Uh, it also goes with the ethos, I think, of, of what I want the company to be about, about being a happy place, family friendly, a place where there's no drama. <laughs> I hide all the drama behind the scenes. I have all the drama. But... And, uh, and the berries is not uh, associating uh, from the, the berry, uh, the stitch, like it's the stitch and berries. The berries, the stitch. The stitch. And small, small things. Like small things, yeah, like the stitches. I like that idea. Like, so berries like the stitches. There's actually because stitches called berry and, stitches. And first, I I meet uh, this brand and Happy Berry. Uh, I I don't associating uh, directly from the fruits. Oh, you didn't realize berry no, is to do no, with fruit. I think uh, oh. because I know it is a um, it is a craft uh, things. It mm-hmm. is a crochet things. Yeah. And then things uh, behind in the name is. Uh, Happy, like as uh, it is a funny things, happy place, uh, yeah, and happy and uh, funny things, and uh, uh, this is the stitch, like as in the berries. So it is oh. just acid, 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 So you acid. thought the berry part was to do with yeah. stitches? <laughs> That's really cute. There are actually stitches called 
berry stitches. Um, I have actually designed a strawberry stitch. So that's a stitch that actually looks like strawberries. And um, I've done some other ones as well. There's, uh, there's, there's a lot of fruit related stitches out there. Actually, I'll have to show you later. So. And you guys as well, if you want to check out my strawberry stitch, then uh, do a search for that on my website. It's a really cute design because I remember when I was designing the road play mat, there's a, which is all made up of squares, granny squares. And there's, I was creating a farmyard farm area and one of the squares I did a strawberry stitch repeating strawberry stitch so it looks like a strawberry field so uh, in in the farm it's very nice and it's, it's very cute <laughs> so yeah so happy berry um started and what's quite interesting is how I got started on YouTube as well because it's it's very strange when people say to me I'm a YouTuber because I never I've never seen myself as a YouTuber <laughs> <laughs> because I never joined YouTube to be a YouTuber. Like these days, all the kids these days, they want to join YouTube, be a famous YouTuber, influencer, and whatever they want, want to do. And But um, that was never my intentional plan. I, I just utilize the platform. And I remember it's all thanks to one follower from 10, 11 years ago. Never, I don't know who that person is now, but... Um, they contacted me and they said, oh, I, I'm following one of your patterns and I don't quite understand something. And can you explain it to me better? And I tried explaining it in words and I, I just found it, it was complicated to try and explain what I was trying to say to, to someone who was an absolute beginner. So I thought, well, why not create a video and show them? It'd be so much easier. And so that's what I did. I... I recorded a video I put it on YouTube it was really bad quality but it was so bad the lighting was really orange and there was no natural light and my camera was not high definition it was a really low definition camera oh it was so bad and um and also I was really shy and really awkward and I was just okay so we do it like this um and then like long periods of silence <laughs> <laughs> so bad and uh, you'll never see those videos they've long been deleted but uh, although there are some very early on YouTube videos uh, that you can go back to the beginning and watch um, but uh, yeah so I uploaded this video and I, I sent it to this this person they, they really helped them and uh, and I just left the video on there I forgot about the video and um and then I, I suddenly, it suddenly got like quite a few views and I was like, well, this is quite interesting, you know. I said, well, maybe I should be sharing more videos, explaining things, I suppose, tutorials. And uh, on YouTube, so I, I uploaded, I remember doing videos just showing images of my work, like compilation, <laughs> really bad quality, really badly edited. And I remember this, I did one of those videos where it was just pictures of my work and it got something like 300,000 views, got loads of views. And this was quite a lot back then. And then I deleted it because <laughs> I was an idiot. <laughs> and, um, but I did some more tutorials and obviously over time, the lighting improved and the, got a better camera. And, um, and then people started subscribing and, but I never really paid attention to who was subscribing or how many people were subscribing. I only paid attention to the comments on the videos and um, interacting with people and, and just getting to know other people and other crocheters and what, what they wanted to see. So that's how I became a YouTuber and uh, it was very, very different, the YouTube life back then. Um, it was a lot quieter. There weren't many uh, crochet channels on YouTube back then. There was uh, some big names. I remember the crochet crowd, I think, was around back then. And uh, there was a, another woman who was quite big, Teresa. Teresa, I don't know if anyone remembers her. So I'm not... She still does crochet. I think she's still, she's still on YouTube. Um, but it was very quiet back then. Uh, there were definitely no British people doing it. I was... I, definitely one of the first if not the first British crochet teacher on YouTube and uh, but I think using US terminology really helped that grow as well because my main audience was American back then and it's actually quite interesting 
when British people come to me now and they say, oh, why, why do you use American terminology, not UK terminology? And it's because my audience was so heavily American based. And the British people just weren't interested in my channel or me or my business ideas or anything. And they're like, no, oh, who are you? Go away. And uh, but then obviously I got bigger and then the British side were like, OK, maybe she's worth looking at. Then it's a very British way of looking at things. I only pay attention when it, 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 they start to look good. So, yeah, my audience was very American based, got to know a lot of American people crocheting and stuff. And I think also, like I said, crochet wasn't huge in the UK. That's definitely a more recent thing. I say recent, maybe in the last sort of five, six years, maybe. Um, yeah, and it grew and grew and grew, and I, it just got more and more and more. And, and then I got my my Silver Play Award from the original Silver Play Award from YouTube, which was a really nice achievement because I've never won anything in my life or achieved any trophy. So that was really nice. And it's quite cool as well because being such an early adopter to YouTube, my Play Award from YouTube, the Silver Play one, is the original one because they changed the design over years. So everyone getting it now gets the new design, and uh, but they don't get the the original design. So I have a nice original one. So I feel quite I feel quite proud. I'm an original 100,000. <laughs> but I've never seen myself as a YouTuber. I've never called myself a YouTuber. I've never paid attention to how many subscribers, uh, other than getting that award, which was a long, long, long time ago now. Long time ago. But um, and it's quite interesting as well because I, I launched a knitting channel. I can't remember when I launched the knitting channel. It was a lot later, but that's re that's coming up to the 100,000, I think. It must be around 60 or 70,000 subscribers on the knitting channel. So um, it'll be really interesting because then I'll get the new Play Award. So I'll have an old one and a new one that looks different, but uh, great achievements, I think. And for me, it's not about something for me it's more it's more about showing that there's such a, a lot of people out there who's interested in my work so it's not just the number it's it's about the fact that there are people out there who enjoy what I do enough to click that subscribe button you know they're they're like I really enjoy this tutorial it's it's what I want from a channel I'm going to click subscribe. To me, that's a huge thing. So, I mean, I I hardly ever subscribe to people on YouTube. <laughs> so I think people who do click the subscribe, it's such a, a big decision, I think. Or well, maybe some people just click subscribe to everything. But um, to me, it says a lot about um, how people value what I do. And that, that means, means a lot. So you guys have been such great supporters over the years. I'd be lost without them. So, so but I, I don't see myself as above them. I definitely see myself as one of them, still learning. I'm still learning to crochet and learning new stitches. So it's just some people are just further ahead and some people are just, you know, we're all in a different place, but we're all on the same playing field, the crochet playing field. And uh, I think we're all still learning and stuff, but that's how I got started in on YouTube many, many years ago. And, um, yeah, so that's how it all began and, and why it began and how we ended up with Happy Berry and not Nanny Berry. <laughs> and uh, it was a, a very interesting journey. And it's, I think one of the strange things, and I said this to you earlier, didn't I, Missy? I said uh, one of the weirdest things is when you get someone in their 20s and they message me on YouTube and they say, I've been following you since I was 10, 11 years old, and now I'm 20-something, and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> you know, people have gone from children to adult, and that, that does make me feel quite old. But I suppose it's the same with my daughter, you know, she's now a teenager, and uh, that really does show how long I have been doing this. And uh, in that time, a lot of stuff has happened. A lot of stuff has happened, a lot of drama, like I said, and um, a lot of failed business ideas. And in this podcast, we're going to be, well, I'm going to be opening up to some of those dark secrets and uh, dramas and controversial things and copyright nightmares and all the other things that have happened. So I hope you guys will subscribe and um, enjoy some podcast information but I think I think we're going to wrap up the first podcast for
for today. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into the origins of Happy Berry. Now you could all go away and call it Nanny Berry. <laughs> I bet someone out there will just go and try and register Nanny Berry. I, I, I'm, I'm basically, I'm happy. It's uh, Nanny Berry is... Uh, Go on. That died a death, you glad? Death. What's wrong with Nanny Berry? No, uh, Happy Berry is much more better. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think it follows the ethos of it, hopefully being a happy place, yeah. um, that people feel happy, you know. Yeah. yeah. And eat, eat some raspberries. Nasty just much more better. <laughs> I think so, yeah. I think it... The Nanny Berry is cute, I think. Uh, it, it is uh, sweet. But uh, Happy Berry is, uh, it is a philosophy... A philosophy, yeah. Philosophy. And, yeah. Uh, More contemporary, I think. Happiness is very well. important in the life, I think. Happiness is very important, yeah. I think crochet brings a lot of happiness to people. And not just uh, from the nanny, uh, every age is in That's the life. That's true, not just the grandma baby. that gives happiness. It's yeah. grandpa too. <laughs> yes, and the grandpa too. <laughs> yeah. It's very important, the man is happy. <laughs> it's like we have granny squares, why don't we have grandpa squares? Is it about time I invented a grandpa square? Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> Start a new trend. Uh, well, thank you very much for saying that. That's very kind. I'm glad. And I'm really glad to have Missy on the team and uh, joining the Happy Berry. If you don't know, he is Me the... Too. Oh, thank you. If you don't know, he is the guy behind all the camera work and the photography. And uh, hopefully he's going to sneak onto some video vlogs in the future. Now we do some, we do some hungry vlogs, so maybe you'll... Because we're going to do the van life, aren't we? We're currently converting a van together. And uh, going to do some van life crocheting on the road, which would be, which would be really interesting. So hopefully you guys will follow along with that as well. But we're going to go. It's been almost half an hour of me talking. I'm amazed. I've uh, done my first podcast. I feel quite, I feel quite proud. So, <laughs> but uh, hopefully I'll see you for the next podcast uh, next month. And uh, I wonder what controversial subject I will come up for my first or second podcast. But for now, it's goodbye from me, Laura, and goodbye from Missy. Missy, and we will hopefully see you soon, or speak yeah. to you soon, or listen to each other soon. <laughs> yes. Thanks so much. Thanks see you so next much. Time. See you next time. Bye. 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 <laughs>